Well, we have another collage of flowers here. We always keep flowers growing in the garden. Yeah, these are the probably the last of the sunflowers. Mm -hmm. I've got zinnias coming on, though. Yeah, you got some more zinnias. These are the last out of my garden. Mm -hmm. They're they've about bit the dust. Yep. A few sunflowers. Yep. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yep, kind of brightens your day and helps keep those pollinators happy as well. Well, I know everybody's probably tired of eating and eating watermelon from the holidays. And we wish all y'all have a happy for had a happy fourth out there. We did as well. We enjoyed ourselves, kind of hung around close. We had a great time. We made a little promise to ourselves a few years ago we won't do much traveling on the 4th of July because yeah. traffic is bad. But I hope you all had a happy and safe fourth. And watermelons are winding up for us, but we still have a few. Mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> I want to show this right here. Oh, that's still hot right there. Uh -oh. So welcome everyone to the Road by Road Garden Show, the best day gum garden show on the radio and the internet as well. Hope you uh, enjoyed your evening and glad you're joining us. We're going to, I might have to get another one. Okay, that one was in the refrigerator a little too long. This one here looks perfect. Okay, so this is our Yellow Doll Watermelon. And on our yellow dollar watermelons, they're kind of a smaller watermelon. This is a yellow meated watermelon. And we have seeded. A, seeded. We have a lot of people talk about when to know when they're ripe. Mm -hmm. So when do you pick a watermelon when is it ripe? Well, if you're growing watermelons, when you come out of this right here, where it goes to the main stem and tees off there, there's what we call a curly cue there. When that curly cue dries down, that is a good sign the watermelon is ripe. However, you also want to check and make sure that it's got a little bit of a yellow spot on there. This one don't have much, but you want that cream colored spot on there as well. So if you're buying in a grocery store, you want to look for that cream colored spot there to know that it's good and ripe. The curly Q is a good indication, although it may bite you a little bit when your watermelons first come in. Once you get past that first picking, it's a real good indicator there. But on your first one, I would say let it sit just a couple extra days to make sure and then pick it, double check, yellow spot, and you're good to go. All right, so we're going to cut into this watermelon right here, and it is a nice cold watermelon. Ba Boom! I made a lot of racket there. <laughs> that might not have been good. Yeah, let's cut I got a small knife there. Oh. Just... There we go. All right. Look at Ooh. that. Yellow. Nice and yellow. These yellow dolls are personal size and they're great to put in the refrigerator because they don't take up a lot of room. So if it's just one or two persons, they're good. Now they do get a little bit bigger than this, but mine was a little small this year due to all the dry weather. No, 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 no. <laughs> due to all the dry weather we had. So tonight we're going to be talking about cover crops. We're cover going to be crops. talking about summer cover crops and we're going to throw in a little bit of transition cover crop there. We're going to talk about some of the cover crops and describe them to maybe give you an idea of which mm. one you should be using to plant. Got, Got my old knife there. What do you think, Mom Hoss? Uh, we planted two good. different kinds this year. We planted the yellow doll and we planted sangria. Sangria is right, sangria's right here if you can see it. Now, these are a lot better to me once they come out of the refrigerator. Have you noticed that? Very sweet. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Perfect. Wow, that's the sweetest one I've eaten this year. So I picked it and put it in the refrigerator for you days. As you've seen the other one, I left it in the refrigerator a little too long. We got watermelons under the tree for all the neighbors. We've been sharing watermelons. Wow, that's good. Mm. I remember the baby doll we ate a couple of years ago that was so sweet. This reminds me so much of that right there. A great, great watermelon for you folks that want a smaller watermelon or a yellow meat watermelon. Mm. You look like there's in a raised bed. Yeah, a raised bed. Yep. Mm -hmm. You've got watermelons growing in your raised bed, but you have a seedless, a seedless kind that we yep. don't actually carry anymore. Yep. Whoops. 
All right, so folks, we're going to talk about cover crops, the benefit of cover crops. If you're not using cover crops in your rotation, you should be. And we're going to talk about why. During this time of the year, as our crops start to cycle off, what you're going to find is you're going to find these lulls in there. Although some of you guys maybe do fall garden as we do, you still have these windows of opportunity in between crops that you can use to benefit your soil, to attract new pollinators, or maybe to tie up nutrients or to complete your nutrient cycle and keep your cycle going good and available for the next plants there. And if you don't have a lot of room to rotate. It does help you cleanse your soil somewhat if you're in that situation that you can't rotate properly, cleanse your soil. Yep, absolutely. Um, what we find is sometimes a year I need a long-term cover crop and sometimes a year I need a short-term cover crop. And we have those slots that we can fill in right here. We're going to talk about those. So we're now. going to talk about warm. Just warm season. We're going to cover cool season later here. We're going to throw in a little tidbit of a transition cover crop as well. There. So the benefits of cover crop, for one, is going to be insect control. If you keep this rotation going up, you break the cycle of some of these disease and insects, particularly we like to use cover crops to break the cycle of squash bugs and things like that. Mm -hmm. It helps to also keep your garden nice and tidy. But when you keep these new crops growing out there, it's going to help tremendously with those root diseases such as blights and things like that. And also these ground dwelling insects that overwinter or reproduce in the soil out there. Um, tidal rotation, as we mentioned. Uh, now these warm season ones, frost won't kill those. So we don't have to worry about that. As you go into our frost season, you want to make sure that as you go into that, you're using a transition cover crop or either you're getting ready to put a cool season cover crop. Because most of all these warm season cover crops will not tolerate any frost. frost. So you can't, you can't go that route. you got to have them do their thing before the frost gets here, with the exception of the one we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> so uh, let's talk about the different types of crops that you may be growing in your garden. So corn is what we consider a monocot. It has the veins that run up and down. It is in the same family as a grass. All pretty much other things that you grow in your garden are going to be considered dicots. Dicots are things that have a leaf and that have veins that run out. Parallel. Parallel. So like okra. A good rule of thumb is if you can follow up a monocot such as corn with a dicot cover crop or you can follow up with a monocot cover crop on a dicot garden crop, that is the best rotation. We can't always do that, but that is a good rotation to do. And I'm going to give you an example of that. So follow your beans and tomatoes with... A monocot, such as sorghum sedan grass, brown top millet. And that's awesome. So follow your corns, corns and monocot, follow them with dicots. Your dicots are going to be buckwheat. Let's get my list right here out and I'll see. It's going to be buckwheat. Sun hemp is a dicot. Iron clay peas is a dicot. And black old sunflower is a dicot. And super beef placidia, I'm almost positive, is a I, I, I got started because I missed it. Yeah, Monocot. Okay, monocots, there's going to be brown top millet, sorghum sundan grass. It's the only two. It's the only two. Your dicots is going to be buckwheat, sun hemp, iron clay peas, black oil, sunflowers, and super pea placidia. So you want to follow a dicot with a monocot and a monocot with a dicot if possible. You can't always do that, but if possible, you want to do that. That gives you an idea of which one you want to use. Corn, you would follow with a dicot, and peas, tomatoes, stuff like that, follow with a monocot if you can. And we're going to throw up this chart. There's actually a link on the website under the cover crops. Uh -huh. um, actually tells you the benefits, the seeding rate. Um, and whether it's a warm season or cool mm -hmm. season. Believe so these not, are some just the get, warm season here. Yeah, like, some people get confused with those. You can find this on the website. Yeah, the one there that's going to be, it's going to be in that middle there, it's going to be Super B for C. And we'll talk about it for just a minute. I got quitting. Wait a minute. You getting confused? Yeah, Super B for C is a 
one that we carried here a while back, a different variety. We got this super beef for Seagan this year. We were able to find the source for it and we knew we wanted to carry it in. So we're carrying this particular one because it is so great for pollinators. But this is going to be one of those transitional cover crops. So if you're late in the fall or early, early in the springtime and you think it's too early to make the transition to cool season or from one season, this transitional period here, the idea for that is that super beef, super beef for sea. You beekeepers out there, this is the one. The bees absolutely love it. It's a great one there. It scavenges nutrients as well. It's good for cut fly. Mm -hmm. So, Maggie's laying down about there. It is a great one. And if you like to be friendly to your pollinators, it's the one to plant. I, it's one of my favorites, but it has its slot in the fall or in the springtime. It will take a little bit of heat and it will take some cool, it will take some cold down into the 20s. So, there you have it. A regular frost won't kill it So, back. when you're thinking about planting these, you need to think about when's the right time to plant them. When's the right time to plant them. Now, these southern summer crop crops we're going to go on right here, you can plant them anytime that it gets hot. And do you have the equipment to get rid of it? Get rid of it. That's a big one. I'm glad you brought that up. So, let's talk about each with... individual one here. Let's talk about the first one right there, which is going to be brown top millet. Right on that is one pound. Uh, brown top millet is great for a soil builder, but it is probably the best one possible out there. Find it in the stack of it. I will. Um, yep, oh, right. there it is. Brown top millet there. I don't know if you can see much about it. That is my favorite for erosion control. So if you got a slope or somewhere or, or a field that or garden spot that washes bad. That's the best one, in my opinion, for erosion control there. Uh, it gets pretty tall there. It's not very good for uh, for pollinators, but it's very good for birds after it dries out. They love the uh, the seed head on that one right there. That's a good one. It grows quick. Uh, if you get, need it for weed suppression, it's a good one. It's what I consider a medium term. You can mow it high and it'll come back. Livestock love it as well. And it's a good fill-in and it loves the heat. Good fill-in in the summertime. And it's good for sandy soils. Get my little clip off here while you eat that watermelon. Oh, no. You about cleaned up the watermelon over there. Yeah. Next one is sorghum sedan grass. Let's see if we can find it. Right here. Sorghum sedan grass has a little uh Round, you know what? You plant this with, with a house garden seed. Let's see if I can show them right there. What a couple of them look like. Those little small roundish seeds are there. Those work good with the garden seed. Like mustard seed. Yeah, sorghum sedan grass is what I consider a long term cover crop. So if you got a spot that you need a cover crop on for a long period of time in hot, dry, warm weather, sorghum sedan grass is the one for you. It does starve the nematode somewhat, so it's been documented that it can uh, reduce your nematode population up to 30%. It's the one that you can mow over and over again. Now, I've never hit, had it to get very tall on me, but I, you can mow it kind of tall and it'll come right back. That's the one right there you can get two to three months out of. Mm -hmm. and just so keep this it out is there. good to follow tomatoes, okra beans. Yes, yes. And it has a very fibrous root system there. It goes good with erosion control as well. Not very friendly to pollinators. It doesn't, it's not going to do a whole lot there for you for pollinators, but it does uh, serve its purpose and it's got its place. I hadn't grown it in a year, but I've grown lots of it before. All right, the next one is Mr. Buckwheat. So this is the for to follow a dicot. Yes, so you could follow corn with this one right here. Now, this is a short season cover crop. These seeds are a little What's the word for that? How to shape them seeds are spiky, like a triangle. Like a triangle mop. Like, yeah, they're, they're not round. Like a little chocolate chip. But wheat is is a short term. By all means, it is a short term cover crop. Um, this you don't get that long. Uh, four to six weeks, it's going to mature out, and you're going to have to extinguish it and get rid of it. Grows really, really quick. If you got pigweed or you got nutgrass or something like that that you're trying to smother out, but wheat's the one for you. The bees love it. It loads up with blooms, grows quick. However, you do need to extinguish it when it matures in four to six weeks. So if you got that small window there for a spot, four to six weeks, 
Buckwheat is the one for you. Sorting. Is that that's sorting? Oh, that's buckwheat. That's buckwheat, girl. Oh, no. All right. And sun hemp. We have sun hemp here. Sun hemp is my newest favorite cover crop. You can plant that with a garden cedar as well. It's not. It's a lot more rounder seed than what that buckwheat is. It's kind of like a very small pea is what it's shaped like. Sun hemp is really all the rave right now. All the commercial farmers are using it. It is a legume. It is a great soil builder. It's a nitrogen fixator, but also it does a great job at scavenging nutrients. Uh, blooms, good for the pollinators. Uh, adds a huge amount of biomass to your soil. So sun hemp is a great one. Is that the one you're going to plant? I know. I planted it last year. I'm not going to plant this year. What are you going to plant? We ain't got to it yet. <laughs> sun hemp is a... Uh, the cows love it. I so just eat my You just eat your watermelon. Sun hemp, if you plant it, you got cows on the other side of the fence, they will tear down the fence trying to get to it. The only downside to sun hemp is it's hard to extinguish. If you don't have a tractor with a rotor mower, I'd recommend not using it. Um, with a regular lawnmower and a garden tiller, it's going to be very, very tough to get rid of. It grows a big stalk on there and it's real woody and hard to get rid of. But the biomass that returns back to your soil is unprecedented if you've got the equipment to deal with it. All right, next one, Mr. Iron Clay Peas. We got this one and we have another one that we're going to talk about that I didn't bring that's real similar. See these Iron Clay Peas right here? These are very well for planting in a spot. There again, you can follow it with corn with Iron Clay Peas. Any type of uh, monocot you can follow with this right here. A nit nitrogen fixator. Uh, the dual purpose, you can eat these as well. So you may not know this, but if you go to the grocery store and you buy canned peas, summer peas or cow peas, more likely it's really? airplane peas. Really? Yes, yeah, used for in the processing industry a lot. It's also used for deer plots. Oh like. man, the deer love it. So uh, iron clay peas is wonderful for livestock and for you guys that want to plant food crops, I mean food plots. This is a good one. You can plant it with the whole cedar as well. It works great in the uh, in the cedar. And it's a good one. Dual purpose, it grows really large. Probably not as large as another one that we have that's called the Red Ripper. Red Ripper is very similar to that. I think the Red Ripper find the foliage is more than the Iron Clay. Iron Clay is more of a compact plant than the Red Ripper is. That Red Ripper will grow like crazy. Mm -hmm. You can eat it as well. So there you have that legume right there. The problem planting it is a food plot sometimes. is deer love it so much, once they find it, they'll eat it back down to the ground and it won't come back. But it does tolerate dry weather, sandy soils. So if you've got poor soils or you're not going to be able to irrigate it, that's a good one right there. Black oil sunflower. This is the one I have planted now. Mm -hmm. Black oil sunflowers you can see there is the same sunflowers you most people buy as bird seed. That's the one I planted out in my big plot this year. Uh, it was very dry. They didn't get very big, but they bloomed. I, probably some of them got knee high, but they bloomed and we had a field full of pretty sunflowers. We did. And uh, it's a good one. It scavenges nutrients as well. It's not a legume, so it doesn't uh, attach to nitrogen to it, but it will scavenge uh, nutrients and keep them in the nutrient cycle. The birds love them. So if you're a bird type person, I'm gonna let mine dry out out there. Do you have a covey of quail? I got a covey of quail out there and I'm gonna let them dry out and then I'm gonna mow them and I'll let the birds eat them. So, so sunflower is a great one right there and you can plant that with horse garden cedar as well. It's somewhat also known as a soil cleaner. So if you got any contamination out there, like maybe some herbicides or something that you're a little bit worried about and you need to clean up soil, Black oil sunflower. So you got some contaminated soil or compost. Yep, or anything like that. Wood. That would be a good one to use to try to clean up some of those soils right there. A lot of biomass too. If you get, especially if you get a good bit of rain on it, does create a good bit of biomass. And we've already talked about the super bee flacilla, which I think is one of the most underrated cover crops. And that pretty much wraps it up as far as the cover crops. So understand which one's going to fit in your slot for your rotation there and use those cover crops as a tool to help you 
Increase your organic matter in soil to help you manage your diseases and your insects as well. All right. Hostinator contest. Oh, what are we doing on that? How are we doing on that? Not sure what the latest uh, weights are. It's close to two pounds. Mm -hmm. You win a $100 gift certificate to the Hoss Tools website. Mm -hmm. Take a picture of your Hostinator on the scale Man. with the seed packet and send it to kpowell at hostools.com mm -hmm. or tag it with the pound hostinator contest on instagram yep make sure we get it yep also your garden photos we want those to um showcase in an upcoming video so on the website under Hoss university there is a place to submit your garden photos mm -hmm. that's good ain't it mm. I think I like that better than this ingredient. Man, I tell you what, that's a tough one right there. The trick is put it in the refrigerator. Yeah, and put salt on it. Mm -mm, no salt. Team salt. Mm -mm. Yeah. All right, folks. If there's a couple crop out there that you think we admitted that we think you think we should carry that works with you, let us know. We'd be interested to see if a and why there's a couple crop that works with. You. <coughs> Excuse me. Out there. We think we got a good selection out there, but there's always more we can know about. So right, and know. on the website, you can actually go under cover crops and filter by warm season or cool season or cold. Yep. Right. Corny joke. Corny joke. What do you call an angry carrot? A steamed vegetable. <laughs> for you. That's for you. Yep. Mm. All right. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's time to get out there and work that garden, work those slots in there, make everything happen. Never keep that garden soil laying flat with nothing growing. Always have it growing, always have it producing. It'll work in your favor. Now it's time for you to get off that couch and get outside and get dirty.